there are some federal lawsuits, there's an injunction that did away with a crazy provision that would require you to turn in voter registration applications within 48 hours. You now have 10 days. And I thank the League for being a party to that lawsuit. I thank the other individuals, La Raza and some other organizations that joined to make sure that this community gets justice for this presidential election. There are still some laws being battled around. One of them is about early voting. And each one of these laws, in my opinion, targets a particular population in our community to try and decrease the voter turnout. The early voting provision cut early voting from 15 days to eight. And no longer can we be open the last Sunday right before the election. Let me provide you with some statistics and you can figure out who they were targeting with this law. In the 2008 general election, 1.1 million African Americans voted in the state of Florida. 54% voted early. On a daily basis, African Americans made up 19 to 32% of all of the voter population. However, they only make up 13.1% of the registered voters in our state. On the last Sunday that we by law can no longer be open, African Americans in large urban counties like Palm Beach made up 36% of all of the early voters. You can see why we have worked very hard in our office to work around that law. Normally, Palm Beach County had 11 locations open for the general election for early voting. We're setting up to open 14 locations, and we will be open a maximum number of hours, 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. We're watching very closely in the last couple of days as that law gets challenged. There is a possibility that they could extend that law back to what it used to be. There's one lone supervisor holding out to an agreement that the governor wants. The governor wants to make five counties that are under the jurisdiction of the Department of Justice agree to do the eight days and a total of 96 hours. There's one supervisor in Monroe County who has decided he doesn't agree with that. The governor has threatened to remove him. He is a constitutionally elected officer in the state of Florida, and I do not believe that we the people want to allow one individual with particular views to, re to take somebody out of office because they don't agree. That's not in the Constitution. That's not what was envisioned when we all fought many generations ago to have our voting rights. We need to stand up. It's time. It's time now. It's time this year. You know, we know that if all of the women get out to vote, they will determine this election. Unfortunately, we don't see that. You hear in other countries, they have fought with their blood and their sweat and their tears and sometimes their bodies and their children. You don't have to do that here. And I know that I'm speaking to the choir, but I would urge you to go out there and find your sisters and your mothers and your grandmothers and your daughters and make sure that they are educated voters. Make sure that they know that the right to vote was hard fought many years ago on their behalf. And today that we stand on shoulders of leaders who gave everything. You know, the ladies that met for tea, many of them didn't see the fruits of their efforts. Only one person survived for 72 years. Charlotte Woodward survived and was able to cast her vote for the very first time in history when we received the 19th Amendment. And you know, today as I watch the film, I see young people who have great potential. I think I'm looking out here at some of our future leaders, some of our state representatives and our state senators, some of our Congress people, hopefully a female president. We gather every year to celebrate Women's Equality Day, but I think this time it's special. This time, this day, is extremely important to the future of our politics. And I'm somebody who runs nonpartisan. I don't care how you vote. I believe that your vote 
is the benchmark of our democracy, and that if you don't cast it, that you have lost a great possession that you are given as a United States citizen. Our office works as hard as we can to make sure that we have educated population, that we have re registered voters, that they have a place to go cast their ballot, that it's easy, it's accessible, it's transparent, and it's accurate. We have a long history in Palm Beach County. We're living that history down. We just had a primary election. It went beautifully. We even had a recount, which is very customary to Palm Beach County. <laughs> and it went well. I stand before you humbly and proud to be your supervisor and want to thank everybody here who helped me get there. I didn't do this alone, and I cannot continue alone. I'm glad to have the partners in this room and outside of this room, and we need your help. We need it now. Imagine that somebody questions legitimate rape, really? That's where we're at. That's where we're at. We cannot let this go. We can't let it go today, here, right now. We have to react. We have to make sure that our voices are heard. The people in this room have strong voices, and I know we're going to hear them out there. But if not now, when? If you don't want to realize your dreams, then just go home. Don't look at any of the articles. Don't watch the political arena. But you will allow somebody else to call your destiny. You will allow somebody else to be your voice. And I know many of you in this room, and that's just not going to happen, right? right. <laughs> Today is the day. Today is the day that we recommit ourselves, that we provide a temperature check. Let's see where we're at. We're not in a good position. For the first time in history, we have lost women representatives in our Congress. We have less than just over 16%. This is the first time in history we are losing women who are lawmakers. I know some of you can step up to the plate. I know that some of us can show you how and some of us can make sure you get there. We need those leaderships, we need the representation, and we need your voices. Sometimes strong, sometimes not. But I will tell you, I have left the legislature but watched some of the members. And I want to thank Lori Berman. She is a very strong women's issue voice in the Florida legislature. Thank you. Easy. I almost got impeached there. I was in a lot of trouble every day because I made a lot of noise. I read the bills, I asked a lot of questions, and you get penalized by boys. The boys are the leadership. And so, Lori, I know it's not an easy job, but I'm proud to have you there. And we need more voices there. And it doesn't always have to be a woman. It could be a man. But mostly it's not. Remember that they won't take up men's health issues when we propose them. And, you know, on the House floor, they almost kicked me out because I said, you know, it's interesting that men who have no relation to abortion would provide legislation, and I don't see anything about vasectomies. I thought they would die. <laughs> but, you know, I mean, the couple has a right, and the woman would have the same right if the man has authority over the woman, and why can't the woman share the decision with the man? They didn't get it. <laughs> But I know that those amendments will come flying this next year, and I know they'll come from Lori. And I know that some of you will protect her in her job because she is doing it not only for herself but for us, for her daughters, for your daughters, for our grandmothers, our mothers, for women all over our country, and for women all over the world. It's time. It's time for us to step up and to make sure that we get out the women's vote this time so that we can direct who our next leadership is going to be, so that we can ensure that they know that we're behind them and they better not mess up because we are watching. Thank you.